Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! Today we have American Sycamore. This comes to us from friend Tuffy Marginas. Tuffy's been a long time viewer and a long time supporter of this channel. I've turned a piece of this American Sycamore before. It turned out beautifully, but it is somewhat difficult to turn. And I'll show you why. The difficult part isn't really the wood, it's that bark. I love that bark. I just love it. it kind of looks like a barnacle. The whole thing looks like a barnacle rather than a piece of wood. Uh, but that, that bark kind of flakes off in pieces. You can see, you can see right up in here. It just kind of falls off. Uh, some of it falls off and some of it doesn't fall off. Some of it I will pull off and some of it will just fall off on its own as it's turned. This is kind of an idea of what it looks like on the inside. I'm pleased at some of the comments on some of my videos that people are saying I've inspired them to uh, look at their wood pile in a different light. It isn't just firewood anymore. And that just makes me happy. That's not what I set out to do with this channel. I set out to just show you what I like to turn, basically. That's, that's really the whole goal of my channel, I guess. This is what I like, this is the way I do it, that kind of thing. A lot of people would look at this and say, well, how in the world would you ever mount that? And then once you get it mounted, how would you turn it? Well, the easy way, and I've seen people do it, the easy way, of course, is just to mount to that side, nice and flat. Put a face plate on there or turn it between centers or whatever. The problem with that is you turn all this away. That's just awful to me. I just can't possibly turn that all away. We'll certainly turn some of it away. We have to, to make something out of it. But uh, what I'm gonna do is take this two and a half inch Forstner bit, drill the flat hole, and I'm gonna find the center of the top here, and I'm gonna take it over the drill press, and I'm gonna drill a shallow hole until I get down to a flat spot. And that flat spot is what my chuck jaws will set against. And then I'll drill a hole in the center of that for my woodworm screw. And we'll get it mounted up. And then what? Then how do you turn it? So now it's facing... Now it's facing this way, away from me. Away from the turner. So I'm looking at this side as I'm turning. Now what? Well, I like to keep the outside shape as it is as much as possible. Again, you, you just can't keep it totally unturned. So you think of, well, what's a bowl shape like? Well, generally like this, right? Generally. Sometimes like this, dish, dished out, narrower towards the bottom. And this, of course, is an oval shape. It's not square. It's not round. It's more or less oval, and I'd kind of like to keep that shape. So I'm going to go with this profile, wider at the top, narrower at the bottom. And as I work the piece, in order, to, in order to keep the oval shape, I'll do most of my work down near the bottom, touching little at the top. So the further I come in, the sooner I will hit here and here. And that's my goal. But I'll leave, I'll leave the end out there, and eventually we'll get to this narrower part of the oval and then we'll stop. We don't want to go much further than that. And that will leave us with an oval shape. I'll show you as we go. You watch, I'll do, okay? Let me get over to the drill press. I'll take care of that. I'll be back. We'll get it mounted up on the lathe and we'll start turning this American sycamore. Well, that didn't exactly work out. I had to switch. I did I did my two and a half inch Forstner bit like I showed you. Then I switched to a three and a half inch because these walls are so high it would hit the chuck body before it ever got seated against the front of the chuck jaws. And then I drilled my hole for my woodworm screw and it just went right in there. It's just rotten in the middle. So then what I did is I mounted a faceplate ring in the center of all that and I'm just gonna put that on my chuck here. And my chuck jaws are gonna fit nicely with that and I'll just open my chuck up into it. And so there we go. I don't know how balanced it is. We'll find out. I'm gonna bring up the tailstock. Now it looks like we're going to be turning at about 600 RPM. I'm going to grab a 5 8 inch bowl gouge, get my mask and face shield on, and we'll get at it.
Now see, by holding our finger here and, and rotating the piece, we can see that we're real close to touching here. We're still a ways away from touching over here. But the idea is to preserve the upper portion, turn away some in this area, some, just some. A lot here on the longer ends, but just some here. Just to reveal that nice wood that we know is under there, but still leave a lot of the bark, a lot of the nature in the piece. Yeah, okay, we're touching everywhere but right here. Look at how punky this is. Real, real punky. In fact, I think I'll go ahead and saturate that with CA. I mean, it's just real, real soft. It smokes as it dries when you use that much of it. So I'm going to let that set a bit. I'll be back. Well, I was waiting for the glue to set up. I did mark out for a tenon down here. But that might become a recess. Reason being, uh, the, the wood around that circle is pretty much solid. But I'm afraid if I make a tenon and squeeze down on it, it's just there's not going to be anything there to squeeze on. It's just going to collapse. So that might become a, a recess. I'm not sure. Well, I was just remeasuring. If I go with my larger jaws, which I probably should, that'll get me out beyond the rot. But they're about four inches, and that puts me clear out here with only about a half an inch base. That'll solve one issue, getting me into solid material, but that means I can't really come down here much more. Yeah, I think I will go with a uh, four inch recess. So let's work on that. We'll start by flattening off the bottom. Now I'm going to raise my tool rest up to about center so that I can use my dividers to mark that four inch recess. so I can use my gouge to make the recess. Well, I do feel like I'm getting to some sound wood. I'm going to use my recess tool to create the dovetail for the recess. Okay, and we're deep enough, but now I need to come back over here and see what I can do about cleaning up my side profile. I think I'm going to try my uh, negative rake scraper out here. that help much. Oh well. Yes it did. Okay. We're done with the outside. Time for sanding. And picking at that bark probably. Kind 
I've just been working at this for a while. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to get rid of any loose stuff. And to me, on, on a piece like this, this particular kind of wood, it doesn't matter much if the bark is gone because it looks exactly the same under the bark. You know, if the bark will stay, terrific. If it won't, I want it to come off now, not when it's sitting on the table in someone's house, or my house, or wherever it's sitting. So this takes a while to do, but you know, I think we're on to something with this piece. I like it quite a little bit. It's very, very nice. And we're going to use shellac on this piece, and that shellac will help hold anything together that I don't find loose. See, it's not all loose. Some is, some isn't. And then what I'm going to do, and I'll show you this after I get my mask on, this says uh, 60 grit, but it's not. I remember that it's 80 grit. I'm not sure why I put 60 on there. I'm going to, uh, typically when I sand bark and these inclusion areas, stuff like that, I'll use 180 grit and that's all I will use. I won't go any more coarse or any finer than 180 grit. But because of the condition of this particular kind of wood, I'm going to go ahead and use this 80 grit, you know, I'm hoping that that will loosen anything that I miss. And then I'll do 120 and then 180 and I'll stop there. And I'll keep picking at it once we get around to the top side, but I want to get, oh, maybe up to here or so. It's all sanded up and finished on here. And then I'll take care of the other half when we're working on the top side. So I'll be, I'll be showing you this and then I'll be showing you uh, starting at 100 or starting at 80 grit on my two inch disc sander, I'll sand all of the turned parts. Let me get my mask on and I'll show you how that all works. And usually that's quick and easy, but this one, as you can tell, is more difficult than most. So, so many surfaces, so many places I need to get into. But that will do a really nice job of that. And then with the 80 grit 2 inch disc with the lathe spinning in reverse at about 400 RPM. So that's pretty easy. All I'm sanding is basically this wing and this wing, a little bit right here. I'm not sanding anything on this side or this side. But you know what? It's just going to be worth all my effort because it is beautiful. It's absolutely gorgeous. And wait till we get some finish on there. Oh my gosh. I'll see you in a bit. I'm really liking this piece. I'm going to brush on a sanding sealer, shellac based sanding sealer, and then I'm going to come behind it with a rag to wipe up any runs or brush marks. And that rag will have fresh sanding sealer on it. This, this has so much incredibly beautiful grain on it, my gosh. As long as we can keep this piece together, as long as the inside isn't any worse than the outside was, this is going to be one of the best pieces ever from this shop. So many colors. Look at, we've got gray and brown and reddish. I think what I'm going to do is uh, apply sanding sealer, at least two coats of this, all over everything I can reach. And then I'll save the shellac. We'll do that inside and out at the same time. That way I'm not putting sanding sealer over an outside finished with shellac. So I won't make you watch all this. It's going to take quite a while, especially when I get up up here into the, the bark areas. Two coats of this sanding sealer and then uh, I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. So that's what it's going to look like and I'll see you back here in a little while. I'm often reminded that not everyone watches every video. I don't show every step of making a bowl in every video, but I have shown every step in several different videos. So you'd have to watch all of them to see everything that I do. I'm sometimes asked how I buff 
what do I use to buff? Do I use steel wool? I used to. I used to use steel wool. What a mess. What a mess. Plus, I just don't like the idea of that steel wool dust flying around the shop, getting in my lungs once I take my uh, mask off. So I switched to 3M abrasive pads. And you can get these on Amazon or eBay or probably lots of places. This one is a gray one, and this is what I use in between all coats of sanding sealer and shellac. After the final coat of shellac only, then I'll use a white one. Same thing, 3M pad. This one's thicker than this is. It's just, just the way they come. They have different things at different times. You might not be able to find these, but you'll find something else. Different sizes, whatever. Different, different size packages. You see there that I cut a circle out of there. Well, that's because one day I said to myself, Self, why don't you cut a circle out of there, two inch, and put it on your sanding disc like that and use it that way. Why, why hold it up there? Why not do exactly the same thing as you do when you're sanding? And Self said, hey, good idea, Phil. And I've been doing it, I'd, well, I'd like to say I've been doing it that way ever since. Half the time I forget. But I remembered today and that's why I'm showing you this. So you just, you just stick it on there, it, it sticks on just like Velcro, although they do tend to fly off a little more often than Velcro does, because it's not Velcro. But it still works quite well, and you just do the same thing as if you were sanding. And it does a better job, and it's easier than folding this up and holding it up here. It's easier than that. Especially on some of these pieces like this over here, where if you don't have it folded thick enough, and if you don't keep your fingers out of the way, you're going to get hurt. So, I, I, and like I say, it's, it's better. It's actually better. And just that using the just the gray pad not the white pad uh, it feels so smooth I mean you just wouldn't believe it especially looking at this particular piece so I hope that is helpful I'm gonna finish up what I'm doing here with this one I'm not doing the white one because I'm not putting shellac on the outside now I'm going to do that at the same time I do the inside so I'm just gonna finish up here and I'm gonna take this off of this chuck I'm going to switch out to my larger chuck that has the larger jaws on it and I'll bring you back and we'll start working on the inside. Looking forward to that. Remember in the beginning I was trying to uh, keep this an oval shape. We've got this long wing, long point out here and, and a matching one over here. And typically when you turn a bowl you want the inside to match the outside profile, typically. But this piece is anything but typical. And then we also have this huge gap right here that goes way way inside where the bowl would be so I'm not sure how we're gonna handle that I'd like to keep this because it kind of looks like a monster also kind of looks like a teddy bear uh, but I'm gonna have to lose some of it if I'm gonna make any kind of a bowl at all here well anyway this won't be a typical bowl this isn't something you're gonna put soup in or salad or spaghetti or anything else this is an art piece and the idea here is to show off all this wonderful nature we have the organic shape it's just it's just gorgeous so I'm not sure what we're gonna do I'm going to uh, work leaning way over the lathe bed this way and take this part off about half of it probably which will probably bring me into this area right here maybe and some of this but there's going to be plenty left and I'm just going to have to make a, as wide of a top of the bowl as I can and then I'm going to have to narrow down in a hurry so that we don't go out the side of the bowl with this big gap. And we're going to be doing that at 580 RPM with a 5 8 inch bowl gouge mask and face shield on. Well, that depression is right here. 
I'll see if I can come out any further or not. I think probably not. Oh boy, it's about a sixteenth of an inch. So that's as wide as we can go. By the time I scrape that and sand it, it's not going to be but 30 seconds of an inch thick. But on the other hand, I'm pretty happy with the shape. I'm not at all happy with the quality of my cut, but just try and get a clean cut on a piece like this. It's not going to happen. We must be very close to that bottom. Uh, about three eighths of an inch. I'm going to get my negative rake scraper and see what I can do. Probably not much. Well, it's not great. I can sand it. It'll take a little work. But isn't that always the case with sanding? Speaking of which, time for sanding. I've just been doing a little spot sanding like that. Uh, finding any grooves that my tool work left behind due to the nature of this piece. I couldn't get a clean cut so it's always going to leave some grooves or ridges or something. But uh, spot sanding like that gets them out really well. Then I will spin the piece up at about 400 RPM. And that's surprisingly not too difficult, thank goodness. And I'll bring you back here in a bit when it's time to put some sanding sealer on there. See you in a bit. Well, sanding went really well. Not as hard as I thought it would be. I had to do a little bit of hand sanding inside of these little holes in here because when you sand with the the disc, it thins out those edges of those holes and makes them really, really sharp, just like sharpening a knife. So I had to spend a little time fixing those up, but it wasn't bad. I guess what I like about doing natural pieces, organic pieces like this, is it's just not what you expect. You see it and you just can't believe it. That's a common comment when visitors come around. They say, well, how did you do that? Or, that's the most unique thing I've ever seen, and that's kind of fun. So we're looking at the tree here. We're looking at the tree, the bark. So I will uh, get on two coats of this sanding sealer, and then I'll put two coats of shellac on over the whole thing, inside and out, and I'll bring you back here in a little bit, and we'll take a good look at it. See you in a bit. Okay, I don't often get the chance to remove a recess. I prefer to remove the recess, just as I remove the, the tenon. I like to remove any evidence of how the piece was held, but often with my pieces, uh, they're only partly there, or the base is too narrow, so that if I remove the recess, I got nothing left. And it just ends up sitting on a flat surface, and I can't have that. So I'm going to remove the recess. I'm just going to create probably a cove or something in here. So I've mounted a block of wood up in my chuck. This is my soft touch. It's just a, actually it's just a dowel. I think a one-inch wooden dowel that I drilled a hole in, and I just screw it onto my live center here. Okay, I think that'll work. I'll spin the piece up, see how that looks. Now I'm going to take a 3 8 inch hole gouge and start removing the recess. Yeah, 
Nope, that looks good. Now I'm going to uh, just take some of my two inch discs and I'll sand it and get some finish on there. I'll do that off camera. It's just gonna take a minute and I'll be right back. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see the before and after shots of this piece. If you'd share the video, wow, that would be so cool. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you very kindly. Well, here it is. One American Sycamore sculpture. American Sycamore bowl. What do you think? I, I just love it. I just love it. Now, admittedly, this has had time to grow on me where it hasn't had time to grow on you and you just might think it's the ugliest thing you ever saw in your life. I get that. I totally get that. Look at this way. This way it's a crown. Looks like a crown. It's just so, so much to see here. And it just finished up beautifully. Now let's see, what do I see? Well, here, here's the beginning. I'm gonna take you around to the front, but here's the beginning of a body. This is his long body. And then he comes around here. Now I hope I can get the angle right. When he was mounted on the lathe, uh, the angle was perfect for me to see. But he kind of looks like a giraffe. Got the two big ears sticking up here. Got his nose up here, two eyeballs. Kind of looks like a giraffe. Maybe he looks like a crocodile. Maybe. No? You don't see that? Oh, come on. Here we have, earlier I said teddy bear, but now I'm thinking koala bear. See the koala bear? See his two ears? And his nose out here, and he's got his arm reaching out as he climbs the tree. You see the koala bear? Here's that very deep depression that I told you about. And that makes this wall thickness a 30 seconds of an inch from the inside of that depression to the inside of the bowl. There's probably more to see in here. It'll take me a while to see it all. Maybe this looks like a, a dog or a wolf. Just lots to see. What I hope you got from this video was my thinking, how I, how I determine what a piece might look like in the beginning. How to mount it, how to begin turning it, how to take advantage of its various features, how not to take off too much. I'm telling you, that's one of the hardest lessons to learn is knowing when to stop. You gotta know when to stop. Like I said, hard lesson to learn. Took me forever. There's the bottom all finished up. Magically can't tell how I held it. Now, viewer Don suggested I get some lighter colored pens to write with. They'll be here tomorrow, Don. I've got silver and gold coming. But in the meantime, I think you can still read my signature. It's got my name, American Sycamore. Yeah, yeah, I, I just love this piece. I hope you do. And I hope you maybe learned a little something. I'm not a teacher, but uh, I felt like this video might have offered a few tips along the way. Thank you to Tuffy Marginas for sending this along for all to enjoy. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.